given the fact that we need a vaccine now and not maybe eight to 10 years later, which is what the usual time to develop a vaccine is, we need something called an emergency use authorization. We've seen at least three companies come forward and submit applications for emergency use approval. So in a regular situation, when you want to get a, a drug or a, a, vac a vaccine approved, um, something that's never been tried in humans before, uh, you generally have to go through this thing called clinical trials. Um, there are three phases to a, a human clinical trial where you test for the safety, uh, something called the efficacy and the immunogenicity in the case of vaccines. Um, and, uh, and, and then you have to just do broader studies in larger populations to make sure that the vaccine or the drug that you're testing will work the same way across different demographics. Now, what happens in the situation of a pandemic like the one we're going through right now is that you may not have enough time to actually do all of this. You, your fast tracking processes we've seen in the last year, we've seen over a hundred candidates for vaccines uh, against COVID be developed and uh, they've, they've all gone through various phases of testing. We've seen uh, a few candidates like that by Pfizer, Moderna, um, then the AstraZeneca and University of Oxford vaccine. Uh, these kinds of vaccines have in such a short span of time, gone through preclinical trials on animals and then also been tested on humans and in, in a very large group of people as well. But given the fact that we need a vaccine now and not maybe eight to 10 years later, which is what the usual time to develop a vaccine is, we need something called an emergency use authorization. In this case, uh, what, what then ends up happening is that you don't really go through the entire process to completion before you get the approval to launch the product. What ends up happening is that you may get the approval before you've completed phase three trials, or you may get a waiver on a trial and then can continue to test the safety, the long-term safety and side effects of the product going forward. And usually when such approvals are given, um, they're given in a very restricted sense, especially in countries like India. Usually the process, it, it depends on what the regulator of the specific country is, is seeking in terms of if safety and, and efficacy data. Um, in the US, they, they do have certain standards that you have to follow. Um, and uh, in the case of the COVID vaccines that we're seeing that are seeking emergency use approval, like that of Pfizer's and Moderna, they had to do, um, they had to put together a large data set of their phase one, phase two, and whatever they had on their phase three clinical trials. Um, and they also had to do follow up. Uh, they had to do two months worth of follow up uh, information or data collected from the, the patients uh, or the participants that they had vaccinated um, to make sure that you know giving this authorization would would be the right decision for the for the government in that uh, in that country. So India doesn't specifically have um, any guidelines for emergency use authorization. That's a concept or a provision that doesn't really exist in this country. Um, but what it does have uh, in its regulations are um, provisions for companies to come and seek either complete waivers on conducting clinical trials. So you can skip a particular phase of a clinical trial if you've submitted enough uh, data from not only whatever you've done in testing in India so far, but, but if you manage to support it with, with additional tests that were conducted in other countries that could back up your claim that this product is, is good, um, that, it, that it works and that it is safe, um, and that there is an urgent need for this product. 
So that's that's something that the Central Drug Standard Control Organization, which is India's uh, top drug regulatory body, the, that's the equivalent of the US FDA um, in India, and and that's something that that they provide for. With uh, and this is what we're seeing uh, companies like Serum Institute Institute of India doing. Um, they've approached uh, they've approached the CDSCO with not only data from a very small scale. Uh, human trial that they've been conducting in India to show that the vaccine that they've developed, COVID Shield, um, is equivalent to the vaccine that it was based off of, which is the University of Oxford and AstraZeneca candidate. Um, they've they've approached with data of of their small scale trials, but they've also gone ahead and submitted additional data that was collected from the global trials of that vaccine uh, conducted by AstraZeneca and University of Oxford in the UK and Brazil. So that's that's the information that they've submitted to the Indian drug regulator um, seeking maybe fast tracking of the approval in their case, citing that this is an urgent need, that this is a made in India vaccine in that sense, you know, going uh, on with that Atmanirbhar Bharat um, campaign uh, slogan and and that those are those are things that they've mentioned in their in their um, application when when they approached the the regulator over here. We've seen in the last two uh, in the last three or four days, we've seen at least three companies come forward and submit applications for emergency use approval. Um, these are Bharat Biotech, their Serum Institute of India, and uh, Pfizer, which hasn't conducted clinical trials of its vaccine candidate in India at all. Uh, in the last year, we've seen emergency restricted approvals being given to certain drugs like remdesivir by Gilead, which was never tested in India or in, uh, in an Indian population. Um, and then to another drug called Italizumab. There were very small studies that were done on, on these drugs for this specific condition before the Indian government or, or the Indian drug regulator actually gave approval to these drugs to be used as part of COVID treatment. So um, at the same time, what, what the government over here, what the regulator over here does is when they're granting an emergency use approval for any product, they put certain conditions when they're doing that. So um, these conditions could be um, it, it could even be the fact that we will restrict the use of, of this product only to government hospitals. It won't even be allowed in private hospitals. So that could be something that the government might say has to be done if this company is going to get emergency use approval for its vaccine. That way, there is, I guess, more uh, control over how this product is used. Um, and, and there is probably more scrutiny over how effective or how safe it is going to be. The thing that we have to keep in mind is in a normal situation, it will take eight to 10 years for any company to get a clear sense of the safety issues, um, the long-term side effects of, of vaccines. In this situation, we have had these vaccines be tested um, and data collected for only maybe a few months. It's not even been a year. And, and that's the data that we're using right now to seek emergency use approval for these vaccines in India. Um, we do have to, to keep in mind that this then means that we don't really know much about the long-term side effects that may occur from using a vaccine like this um, and that we also don't know how long the effects of this vaccine will last.